Oh yeah, I said it. What's up guys, I'm here, and here we are to talk about why the Ten Shadows is overall kind of like a whack, if not bad technique. Now here's the thing, here's the thing, right? The Ten Shadows has probably like the second highest peak in the series. If not, I'd say arguably the highest peak in the series alone. Because notably, the Limitless and the Six Eyes cannot reach their full potential without each other. That is a wombo combo right there. But the Ten Shadows has inarguably pretty much the highest peak. Big Papa Maharaga. And not just Big Papa Maharaga. But if you master the Ten Shadows and whip out Chimera Shadow Garden, not just one Big Papa Maharaga, not just two Big Papa Maharaga, but infinite Big Papa Maharagas all at once, yes. Obviously, fighting 10 Maharagas at the same time within a 10 Shadows user domain. It was absolutely insane. It would be absolutely boogoo bonkers. But we aren't talking about a hypothetical top level crazy 20 finger Sukuna 10 Shadows pushed to its absolute limit. We're talking about the average users. Of the 10 shadows technique when i say the 10 shadows technique is kind of whack if not just a little bit bad so ladies and gentlemen since one of y'all thought i was lacking fun fact i have it on me and i keep it on wrong wrong <laughs> um ladies and gentlemen i have it on me and i keep it on me at all times one of y'all thought i was lacking because i didn't mention the blade i make y'all y'all know y'all know i Y'all, never sleep. Never, never, I, ne I, ne don't say I'm armed. Don't say I'm not armed. Never say I'm not, I, you know, I keep I keep it on me. I keep them on me. Not it, not it. I keep them on me. I keep all of them on me at the same time. <laughs> Y'all <y> th <laughs> thought Zoro was crazy with three sword style. Y'all want to catch me with four sword style. But regardless, the tension house technique. Why do I think it's kind of whack? So, I think at base, the tension shadows technique has some great things about it, right? It has some great things about it. But the biggest issue is that unlike with pretty much every other technique in the whole series, the limits of the 10 shadows technique are invalidated by the user. Or realistically, the peaks of the 10 shadows technique are nigh on 9.99999 times out of 10 invalidated by the user. And what do I mean by that? Notably, Remember, the 10 shadows technique allows for a couple things. It allows for shadow storage. It allows for shadow travel. Though admittedly, the range of the shadow travel is pretty much entirely unknown. And it also allows for the summoning of Shikigami. Now, admittedly, the first two are very, very nice. Very, very juicy, in fact. The ability to do store juicy, scrumdily umptious items in your own shadow is fantastic. Sure, you need to support the weight of the items, which is a little bit a little bit concerning, but in a verse where all, everybody is empowered, and especially a 10 shadows user would be empowered by cursed energy to make sure that their general reinforcement is more than above carrying the weight of a sword, two swords, three swords, four. You may be able to, you might, you might as well call yourself Link because you probably will have the four swords. So that is good. That is very, very good. Shadow travel, very, very useful. I think Megami slash Sakuna actually isn't using it to its full capability because like, if I could leap into other people's shadows, I would probably be doing that as like the opener, never the closer or just a sneaky surprise attack. That would be my first move. I would leap into the shadow of myself and then leap out of your shadow and just boop right in the back of the head. But those are the only things that the 10 shadows technique provides the user themselves individually. What do I mean by that? A lot of other techniques in the series are user centric for other major techniques within the big three families you have projection sorcery a very recent technique it makes the user faster yet can still have effects on the opponent such as instant paralysis and plus the domain that we saw from Kirsten Oya that is super duper crazy in of itself not only do you get the crazy effects on somebody else such as paralyzing them for a whole second and also even worse, <laughs> like tearing them apart down to the cellular level from using the domain, but also you yourself get a really good speed buff. That's fantastic, honestly. It, especially considering with something like Projection Sorcery, you can just stack further and further and further and further and keep moving on. For Creation, Creation, another notable technique of the families. Unfortunately, I mean unfortunately, <laughs> 
content creation by my Zenin is pretty whack. I like I can't even say otherwise. And creation in general is apparently pretty whack because Yorozu can't even use it that well. And she has hey and error tears of cursed energy and she can't use it that well. But even still, creation can be used to amp yourself in good ways through things like the bug armor and the liquid metal as a defense to oneself while simultaneously making an offense against your opponent once again through the bug armor once again through the liquid metal even through things like the perfect spear and stuff like that you can make yourself more powerful with your technique with creation and projection sorcery moving on to the other big clans blood manipulation it really isn't the best of techniques in my opinion if you're name is not Choso, but even with characters like Kamo, you once again, you have that dual utility. You have the ability to buff yourself with things like Flowing Red Scale stack, and you also have the ability to attack others with things like Piercing Blood and Convergence. Those abilities allow you to not only make other things around you take damage, but also make sure you yourself are stronger. And the final big bad one, the Gojo Clan itself, Either the Limitless or the Six Eyes both make you more efficient and more powerful as a sorcerer. The Six Eyes alone, while they don't sound that good, they do give you absolute optimization of cursed energy. You basically have the finest level of control in the entire series, to the point where you could probably fight for a long, long, long time. Even Team Gojo, before properly mastering the Six Eyes, could fight for days on end and maintain a super high cost cursed energy technique because of the sheer efficiency why did i spread that out in like three words the sheer efficiency of the six eyes that was provided to him through that technique and then plus the limitless is the limitless of course you can't use it as well without the six eyes but like even just having blue is really really good not to talk of red not to talk of purple not to talk of the domain expansion none of that simply blue alone is crazy and obviously you get things like flight and telekinesis and a whole bunch of stuff based off of blue and it's further mastery and once again the six eyes helps optimize yourself and even the limitless helps optimize yourself based on you know the neutral limitless the ability to erect an nion impenetrable defense around oneself at all times that is fantastic and even lesser techniques something like boogie woogie it allows for a whole ton of flexibility on oneself you can swap yourself you can swap other people you can swap objects anything with cursed energy you can get a boogie woogie in anywhere and everywhere allowing for offensive deep Defensive support all types of utility and all of that is amazing and it goes on and on and on from cursed spirit manipulation to bombaye to realistically cursed speech even copy there are so many different techniques that make the user themselves more powerful and thusly make them more viable in combat what's the big issue with the 10 shadows and I don't do none of that. <laughs> like, like, here's the thing. The 10 shadows in of itself does not make the user individually more powerful. And the big issue with the 10 shadows technique is that if you are as powerful or more powerful than the user of the 10 shadows technique, you don't have to worry about the Shikigami they summon. Because guess what? They had to beat the Shikigami that they summoned. This isn't something that can be loopholed. When I... Did not read chapter 117. I thought, oh, maybe a 10 Shadows user just wasn't playing optimally. Maybe they didn't just power creep themselves by like cheating and going out of their way to include someone else in the ritual and then beat the Shikigami and do all that mystical magical stuff. But no, Megami clearly states, 100% from it, I just didn't read. Megami clearly states in 117 that a user of the 10 Shadows must beat the Shikigami themselves. So the Shikigami. Nine out of ten times, depending on the special circumstances of the defeat, the Shikigami nine out of ten times is going to be weaker than the user who is summoning the Shikigami. Okay. While an increase in numbers is nice, like, what is that going to do for you? If your opponent's just as fast and just as strong as you, they're likely going to be able to one-tap. Or not one-tap, because maybe you didn't. Maybe the ten shadows user didn't one-tap. But they're going to be able to beat up your Shikigami. And the thing that sucks about the Shikigami is that if they get got, you can't get them back. They are one and dones. In cases like Curse Spirit Manipulation, all the curses are also one and dones. But at least you have like, what, like thousands of them? What? I think in a fan book, Gage said like, 
Kinchaku has like nearly a million. Like there's a bunch of them. There will always be more curses you can I don't I don't, I don't, I don't. But for the ten shadows technique, you get ten. That's fine. You get ten. That's you couldn't see it. You get ten. There you go. And that it just ain't good enough, especially considering what the individual Shikigami themselves have to offer. The first Shikigami, the Divine Dogs, they're neat. But look at Megami. Megami, who comes from one of the big three Jujutsu Sorcerer families, should have relatively high amounts of cursed energy due to the consistent negativity in his life and his, I guess, quote unquote, royal, like, would it be royal lineage? And like his Divine Dogs are just the size of regular wolves, if not even a little bit smaller. And uh, they kind of just get bullied. Sure, they can damage special grades with their claws, but like finger bearer special grades. Not your Hanamis. Not your Jogos. The best, the most crazy AP feat we've seen from one of the Divine Dogs is them like... Oh, actually, no, I think they did damage Hanami. But like taking a chunk out of an off-guarded Reggie that's the best we get to see those things are high grade one at best then Nue. Nue is really really good because it allows for flying electricity utility but like heaven forbid your opponent has a projectile and can just knock that thing out of the air just take one of its wings off and uh oh now you have to de-summon Nue because if Nue gets destroyed then you lose Nue that's the big thing you can never use the shikigami for any sort of risky plays like you can do something with cursed spirit manipulation or even garuda or rika or any of the things that are durable enough or can get replaced or respawned with the 10 channel technique does not allow for that flexibility then you have the toad the toad is whack like what like it, it all it can do is restrain you bro like and here's the thing once again if megami was able to beat the toad I'm pretty sure you'll be able to beat the Toad. If you have any technique that remotely amps you. Obviously, Star Rage, you're beating the Toad. <laughs> Limitless, you're beating the Toad. Crispy Manipulation, you're beating the Toad. Copy, you're beating the Toad. You're beating the Toad regardless. The Toad is not a threat. Even if he summons a whole bunch of them, just rip them off. We literally see Reggie getting trapped by the Toads. He's just like... Okay. Gets a knife and... <laughs> gone. Absolutely gone. Immediately. The Toad invalid the great serpent unfortunately the great serpent i feel like it gets victimized <laughs> just it got victimized by sakuna we couldn't necessarily see what it does and the great serpent was pretty massive but um once again megami was somehow able to beat it that means you can likely beat it once again if you are relative to megami the shikigami do not pose that much of a threat and if you can destroy the shikigami megami then loses access to that tool and while the totality is a good thing the totality doesn't provide any sort of crazy, insane amp. Anything that's like a multiplier of 10 times. It's not going to suddenly take a Shikigami that's fodder and turn it into an actual threat. So something like the Toad Shikigami will never be powerful. Something like Rabbit Escape will never be powerful. Something like, well, okay, New Way and the Divine Dogs. They could go crazy. But once again, not really all that crazy you have multiple things that can either out speed out damage or out tank all of these things on their own and even if they get those nice juicy scrum deliumptious amps something like the max elephant well, that's kind of nice though admittedly once again it runs into the same problem if megami was able to beat it so can you if you are relative to megami you can beat the max elephant reggie was able to flat out catch the darn thing and no Reggie, I mean, it's not like, I'm not saying Reggie's fodder or anything, but I wouldn't say Reggie's top 20. He was able to, after taking a whole bunch of damage, to support the real weight of Max Elephant. Notably, outside of Domain, Max Elephant, one, just isn't the size of an elephant. Like, it's a little bit taller than Megami, which is not, <laughs> Megami's not elephant sized. And also with that, Max Elephant doesn't usually actually have its full bulk weight, so it's actually lighter than a regular elephant. And if Reggie, most likely at best a high grade one S fighter, can catch the elephant, I wouldn't be shocked if he, other people could just throw that bad boy around. If Reggie just has regular curse energy reinforcement, not even a technique that amps his strength, Rose just a regular dude with, well, presumably average amounts of cursed energy. So the Max Elephant isn't necessarily that threatening. I mean, the flooding is good. Like, you could hypothetically drown somebody, but what if you're in an open space? What, are you going to have Max Elephant flood the Earth? Like, that's not going to be able to happen. And then you have Rabbit Escape. And I mean, like... The reason I like Rabbit Escape is because they can actually get got. Like, you can destroy, the seemingly destroy the Rabbit Escape 
Shikigami with like no issue. But once again, what do they do offensively? What do they do for you? Do they make you any stronger? Do they make you any faster? No, they're literally just a distraction. And well, that's good. You can escape with them. Bro, you're in a fight. You want to be able to beat your opponent down. You can maybe hide other Shikigami or yourself in the rabbit escape. But even then, I'm not sure how effective that'll be when people can literally sense cursed energy. So I, I don't know how much of the escape works out. And then you have the Madoka deer. Which is nice, which is nice. But notably, we only see the Madoka Deer summoned by 15 finger, meaning this is the amp variation of the Madoka Deer. And it is like twice Sakuna's height, but this thing also shows no offensive capabilities. Like legitimately, it, I don't, I'm not sure if it can actually attack. Like it has a good ability in the fact that it releases RCT, which is good for healing and it's good for negating things infused with cursed energy. But um, what else does it do? doesn't make you stronger. And once again, if you are able to beat the deer, or no, if you are relative to Megami or any 10 Shadows user and they were able to beat you or have relativity to you, they can likely beat the darn deer. Simple as that. And then you have the final one. The final one, or the penultimate one before, in terms of the ones we know. Maybe we already have all 10 if you think the Divine Dogs count as two and they got reduced down to one into Divine Dog for Megami. But the Piercing Bull, or piercing ox as the wiki calls it is a shikigami that can charge with immense strength it can only move in a straight line but the longer it's charged the more powerful it is its physical strength is robust enough to match against a reincarnated sorcerer from the Heian period yes but remember this is 15 finger sakuna's piercing bull post bath imagine what megami's piercing bull looks like you like you got to remember new way got a gigalicious amp from 15 finger sakuna to the point where regular Nui was probably like a little bit bigger than megami in size to towering over skyscrapers so if you want to go with that sort of scale comparison between Nui and regular Nui, the piercing bull when summoned by megami your average 10 shadows user is likely going to be like this big or like maybe even smaller like once again the size comparison between Nui is gargantuan so the piercing bull charges with immense strength for 15 finger sakuna the exception to the rule and once again need to remind you if you're relative to 15 finger you can probably take out the bull you can probably take out the user of the 10 shadows technique or at least their shikigami if you're relative to that user and once again the piercing bull does not provide any sort of extra utility to you yourself as the wielder of the shadows technique other than the extra attacker but then you run the risk of your opponent just annihilating the bull not letting it build up speed or to live it let it build up a charge and just knocking it out of existence then finally you have oh the thing that makes it all worth it right you know that good juicy dang we love it we love it you know it i know it We all know it. They call him Father Maharaga for a reason. The eight-handled sword divergent seal of divine general Maharaga has never been mastered by a user of the Ten Shadows technique. Except for Sukuna, the strongest sorcerer in ancient history, who isn't even a natural user of the technique. Every other user of the Ten Chows technique has used it as Yuki used her black hole as a double KO rather than an actual KO. So remember, unless your name is Ryoman Sukuna, Maharaga is quote unquote an asset, but in reality, he's an asset and a liability at the same time because seemingly enough it will it will attack the 10 shadows user first like it literally knocked out megami first before actually turning to haruta so it is entirely possible that you as the 10 shadows user will get attacked by your own shikigami first and you can't beat it you can't beat it once again we got to remember the 10 shadows technique its upper limits its fullest potential is only reached when you are stronger than everything it has to offer. What's the point of it then? There is one exception case where it's the point, and that's with unlimited void from a limitless and six size user. That's it. Because then you as the user wouldn't be able to react to that, but if you can face tank it enough times, I guess, then Maharaga could adapt to it. But even still, 
that is one use case out of how many like on the average how much utility is the 10 shadows technique really providing you its user a little bit because the shadow travel but then again the shadow travel plus the literal inventory can only go so far you can't carry everything in the inventory you can't shadow travel halfway across the world you can probably shadow travel to the shadow you can actually see we've never seen megami go farther than that Eh, not that crazy it provides you no physical buffs it provides you no speed buffs it doesn't give you a cursed energy buff it just gives you 10 shikigami or nine at the moment if you unless you think the divine dogs count as two it gives you nine shikigami who you all have to be stronger than to use for a comparison imagine this instead of ghetto being able to use cursed spirit manipulation to its fullest right from the start where he could just every single curse he ran into and then all those curses stay at the same level or could be amped by his curse energy if he felt like it imagine if he had only 10 slots of it and every single time one got got it made the other one stronger marginally but then he lost that one forever and also he couldn't amp them with his cursed energy it just follows his basic output that'd be kind of booty me wouldn't it imagine if for something like i don't know what's another nice equal comparison to the 10 shadows imagine for the limitless right you're a limitless and six size user but you can only use red after you've proven that red is worthless to you because you can beat it you can only use blue after you've proven blue is worthless to you so you can beat it you can only use purple once you start to invalidate your own abilities which is what the 10 shadows does the 10 shadows literally lives off the idea that you are going to go out of your way to invalidate every one of the shikigamis it offers you that's the point why do i need the divine dogs if i was able to beat the divine dogs why do i need the toad if i was able to beat the toad why do i need new way if i was able to beat new way why do i need the great serpent if i was able to defeat the great serpent once again you may be able to make a pretty solid argument that well it's good to have numbers on your side it's really good to have numbers but still you can't have numbers except for things like maybe the toad and rabbit escape because if you slip up if you make the mistake and one of your shikigami gets got that thing's gone forever the utility that that thing provided is gone it's cooked permanently you can't get it back and sure it's gonna make your other one stronger but how much stronger is really unquantifiable so what good does it do you and especially with no amps to yourself that's the big thing that's the thing that holds the 10 shadows technique back a lot it'd be one thing if you could like i don't know perform like crazy enhanced shadow strikes or could like or sh if shadow traveling like doubled your innate speed or something where you would get a usage of yourself realize if your opponent is fast enough to simply grab your hands or even one of your hands, every single one, let me see, let me double check, every single one of the 10 shadows technique requires a very specific two-handed sign. Oh, actually, no, the Great Serpent doesn't. The Great Serpent doesn't. But the Divine Dogs, New A, to the Toad, I can't tell the Great Serpent, based on this one shot in the anime from the wiki, I don't think the Great Serpent, but Max Elephant, rabbit escape the madoka deer the piercing ox and even maharaga they all require hands both of them what if your opponent just grabs your wrists uh oh i guess you're stuck out of luck i'm not sure if you can like forcefully fade into the shadow but like i guess that's it guess what happens if you try to grab a limitless user by the wrist you can't because <laughs> they have the neutral limitless what if you it happens if you try to grab a six size user by the wrist they'll still just fight you <laughs> they'll still just box with you they'll probably kick you in the mouth and actually do decent damage considering how optimized their curse energy is what happens if you grab a cursed spirit manipulation user by the wrist they still spit out a cursed spirit at you probably through their mouth and then you just gotta deal with it what if you grab yuki by the wrist she's gonna rip your wrists off she's gonna tear your hands off your whole arms gone what happens if you grab toto by the wrist he's pretty incapacitated i can't even like pretend like bro, bro, bro needs the hands but the flexibility isn't there grab a, proje a projection sorcery user by the wrist another one of the zenin clan guess what 
You're probably frozen for a second because I highly doubt you're moving according to 24 frames. Grab a construction user. They're going to construct something in your face and then you're immediately done. That's the thing. Without the hands, you're cooked. You can't even summon anything. And that leaves you with two things. Your storage, which you can't access because your wrists are being grabbed. And or your shadow travel, which I'm not sure you can access because your wrists are being grabbed. We literally see this. We see Sukuna grin at Megami. And then Megami says, he tries to go, Big Daddy Mahorana. And then, of course, Sukuna's like, you need hand signs to do that, bruh. And just spreads him. Spreads Megami. I don't mean it like that, but spreads Megami. And then bada bing, bada boom, Megami can't do anything. It has to be forced to swallow the finger. Imagine, once again, I can't, I can't really excuse Boogie Woogie. Because, like, the technique is literally gone. Now that, now that Toto has lost an arm. Speaking of which, where is Toto? He's been on the narrative for so long, bro. Where? Bring my boy back. But regardless, that lack of easy access is one big thing. The lack of versatility and viability. Like, what outside of Nue... What really specific hacks does a 10 Shadows user get? Like, remember, this is a verse where characters have the ability to negate concepts, can manifest impossible things like imaginary mass and the infinite reality between you and other people. A verse where people have access to literally boundless amounts of cursed techniques, either through specifically copying them in the case of Yuda and or the usage of various cursed techniques in the case of ghetto and kenjaku and then you have even more characters who can do weird crazy things like adjust to your cursed energy levels with their attacks and immediately annihilate you or just big old dumb beams of energy or can shatter the space on top of you you get these crazy dumb hacks but like divine dog can cut you up why can't you do that with a sword uh. the toad can restrain you that's just rip it apart. Like, it's a toad. It's like, it's not anything crazy, not anything special. The Great Serpent. It can try to constrict you. But, like, if you are any sort of halfway decent with your technique that happens to amp, you can probably break out of it if the Ten Shadows user is someone you're relative to. Because they were able to break out of and beat the Great Serpent. For Max Elephant, that's a little bit annoying. That... <laughs> <laughs> Max Elvin is a little bit annoying. But once again, what hacks does it have other than drowning you in water? Okay, just jump. Once again, this is a very superhuman verse. Like, the threat of flooding is not that much of a problem. And even, and that's if you're inside. If you're outside, the threat of flood, flooding is even less valid. Because then it's literally not going to be able to do it. Rabbit escape, what hacks does that thing have? Heck, all the way up to the Madoka Deer. The Madoka Deer is kind of better because it has RCT, which can negate cursed energy stuff but even still just punch it in the mouth i don't think you can negate cursed energy reinforcement so just punch it in the mouth and the piercing ox well sure the momentum buildup is fantastic what if what if you just don't let it do that and you execute it before it can build up momentum it's only hacks invalidated I don't know. Like, I'm just looking at the 10 shadows technique and I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing something that can rival the limitless in the six eyes. I'm not seeing something that's, like, up there able to surpass Gojo in power. Because it just doesn't have anything. Even with the eight-handled Sila General, Divine Warrior, Big Daddy Maharaga, even with him, if you're able to use him, you've already surpassed him. And once again, this specifically gets worse if you think Maharaga actually doesn't scale with the amount of cursed energy that's in a user. If you think 15 finger Maharaga and 20 finger Maharaga and Megami Maharaga are all the same, then, then Maharaga is even 15 finger level. Okay, to be fair, very few characters are 15 finger level. They have very few characters are 15 finger level, but still... Maharaga clears so drastically from the rest of the Ten Shadows that no one's actually been able to use it except for the King of Curses who stole the technique. Doesn't something sound wrong about that? Can you imagine if I were, like, let's say you come up to me and I offer you a house. And you're like, oh, cool. I like homes. 
I like having a place to live. Let's do it. And then I sell you the house. But then I tell you, oh, yeah, by the way, there's this one major, major, like it is like I <laughs> it'll be like this. I sell you a house. You buy the house from me. You're ready to go and move in. But then I've locked off the master bedroom. Like, boarded it up entirely. Like, I put a dresser on the other side, too, and I climbed out the window, and I barred that up, too. Like, it is literally impossible to get into the master bedroom. But if you do ever open the master bedroom door, you then have to fight prime Bruce Lee, fused with Chuck Norris, fused with Dave, Dwayne, I said Dave, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. But yeah, sure, you may stand a chance, but you probably don't. You're probably going to immediately lose. And then... Whoever else is in the house with you is likely going to immediately lose. That's what the 10 Shadows Technique does. It gives you a whole bunch of random fodder that doesn't do anything to buff you individually. It gives you one ability that can seemingly only be used by sight range. Another ability that weighs you down and makes you less effective as a fighter, considering how important speed is in JJK. And then it locks the best of the technique, the peak of the technique, behind an impossible wall for any average sorcerer not named Ryoman Sakuna. Can you imagine if you just couldn't access the full potential of projection sorcery? You couldn't access the full potential of the limitless and six sides. I mean, the limitless and six sides is a little bit. That's a little bit gatekeepy too. But still, Gojo was able to awaken to that. We have we never got to see Megami awaken to Maharaga because Bro never had the time for one, and two because Maharaga is just undefeatable. The best part of the technique is locked away, and if you that's the catch twenty two. If you ever do get the best part of the technique it's pretty much irrelevant anyone who's gonna be able to fight relative to you unless you do what sakuna's doing unless you have rct and you're able to face tank a whole bunch of stuff unless you do all that then the moment you bring out your ultimate omega trump card is gonna get hit and done in because if they're relative to you and the only way to beat maharaga is one tapping it they're likely fully capable of one tapping maharaga so like, what are, you, what are you supposed to do? Even once you reach the pinnacle, once you reach the peak, it's irrelevant. Look at Sakuna now. He's only like, oh, okay. Can't whip out Maharaga now. Let me get it to adapt to everything Gojo does first by face tanking for it. Why? Because Sakuna's so clear of the 10 channels technique. Well, like, like, that's, it's so strange. It's like a character, it's like this technique is built to have the user of the technique invalidate the technique itself how is that a good technique how is that something that's viable how is that something that's up there with the likes of the limitless with the heck with the likes of like projection sorcery projection sorcery is cracked once again it has the dual utility of making the user more powerful and being a hindrance to the opponent really really good for something like Uro sky manipulation it makes the user more powerful and more freeform and causes difficulties and can reverse attacks at the opponent crazy concept even for something as simple as ryu's curse energy discharge you get all that extra bulk from being super duper crazy and plus you have the ability to defend yourself with your blast and use your blast as output all these unique things they give the user perks to their physical stats but what does the 10 shadows give the user 10 shikigami that you have to beat before you can even use them like, like, I, I just don't know. I'm not sure if I can really give this the quality seal of approval. It provides nothing to you on a power front. It provides nothing to you on a speed front. It gives you the tiniest bit of diversity with things like the round deer or the Ma Madoka deer. I almost called it the Maharaga deer. The Madoka deer, the piercing bull, and the eight-handled divergent seal of divine general Maharaga. But the last of those things is impossible to access unless you're already number two in the verse or number one depending on how you ask the prior two are only also shown by number three in the verse 15 fingers sakuna so we never actually got to see megami use them and how effective they would be on the much smaller scale that they would have since they aren't being fueled by sakuna and then everything else is kind of white everything else is kind of white not a single except for new new has the electricity but even still knock that bird out of the air the Ten Shadows technique is pretty whack and kind of bad in my opinion because it doesn't give anything you can't get elsewhere better. 
You want better Shikigami usage with more quality and quantity? Use Curse Spear Manipulation. You want more raw power? Use Star Rage. Use Yuji. Use Heavenly Restriction. Use anything like that. You want more speed? Whip out the Projection Sorcery. You want more hacks? Whip out the Limitless. You get so much more from pretty much every other technique immediately. Not immediately. Even once again, going back to Gojo, Team Gojo, Blue plus the six eyes plus the neutral limitless is cracked. Like, bro, is probably still a top 10 character. Well, maybe not top 10. But, like, bro, is still super duper up there in terms of characters in the verse just on those three alone. And then he got more DLC. But, like,. The Ten Shadows technique, I'm not sure what DLC you give it. How do you how do you buff the Ten Shadows technique to have it have an RCT sort of fueled effect? How do you buff the Ten Shadows technique without breaking the fundamentals of it? I think legitimately the best way to have made this work, even though it would have been invalidating itself in the long run, would have been to have the Shikigami be able to be slain by outside help alongside as long as the user lands the final blow. If they don't, then they don't get it. But I think that should be the bare minimum because otherwise, 10 Challenge Technique just doesn't have much to offer. However, that's what I think. Please what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you guys think I'm absolutely wrong? Do you think the numbers and the brute strength and the pure ability of jumping gives the 10 Challenge Technique an insane edge? Or do you guys think the 10 Challenge Technique is a little, uh, it's a little bit whack? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure the little notification bell so you do not miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do have a Patreon down below where you can support me for as low as one, count on one, a month. Get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Now, thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is that guy with a pencil writing off. I'd like to give a very big thank you to our $3 members, Rokiner Plains and Red Wolf 4765. I'd like to give another very big thank you to our $5 patrons, Alex Ice Rose, Art Goon, DemXLND, Midnight Gem Lord, Red Wolf 4765, and Sean. I'd like to give another, another very big thank you to our $10 patrons, iDemokami, Joaquin, and Robbie Uchiha. I'd like to give another gargantuan thank you to our $25 member, Alex Ice Rose.